They can be in this at any moment. They just gotta up their mental game, let their talent speak. Amazing placement. What a shot. Yahtzee over him. Aspect of mental toughness here that's just so different. I like the body language of all four players. Oh, look at that shot! Great hands from Kiro. Hello and welcome to the APTA Tour presented by Volley. We are live from the Short Hills Club in Short Hills, New Jersey, bringing you the 2024 Short Hills Grand Prix, which is the 13th stop on the 2023-24 APTA Tour with live streaming brought to you by the APTA membership, the APTA national sponsors, Volley and Fusion, and local sponsors for this event. Our lead sponsor is Corian. Thanks to our platinum sponsor, Maplewood Ford and the New Jersey Men's Platform Tennis Association. Thanks to our gold sponsors, uh, Spyro, Harrison & Nelson, Paper, Ribbon & Wrap, and the New Jersey Flex League. Thanks to our silver sponsors, Club Pilates and Smith Chiropractic. I'm Patty Hogan, along with Vera Basanova and the one and only Jeff Morneau, bringing you semifinals in women's play with um, Nicolescu and Haubauer up against our current number one and defending national champs, Macy Elliott and Lynn Burst. Welcome, Jeff. Welcome, Vera. Thank you, Patty. All right, we have um, on your screens right now Macy Elliott in a gray hoodie with a signature big hoops in her ears. We have Lynn Burrush on the ad side in the back in all black at the net warming up right now in a gray hoodie, red hat. We have Ellie Hallbauer and on the ad side at the net, a red hoodie, white hat. We have Gabby Nicolescu. All main draw matches are regular scoring, best two out of three sets. All back draw matches will be regular scoring, best two out of three with a third set, a match tiebreaker, which is first to 10, win by two. And the umpire for this match is Margaret Green. And Jeff, why don't you quickly take us through the draw, how these players got here? Yeah, it was a great, um, this is a really, really, really solid draw here at Short Hills. It always is. It's one of the premier events of the season. All of the players looking forward to Nationals make an appearance here. They come here in early February to really get their games in gear, figure a couple of things out to uh, make, as they make their way to the uh, finals here and get to Nationals. But how, it seems like, you know, all the seeds, I think, for the most part, kind of making their way through, right, Patty? Sure, I think we've got one, two, three, and four here in the semifinals. Um, Morgan Sakura escaped 7-6 in the third set in their quarterfinal, Jeff. Um, who, did, who did they take out in that match? Well, Morgan Sakura took out Alexandra and Lalek in a great match. You're right, it was the best match of the semifinals. Clearly the one to watch. They made their way through and they're, you know, they're going to have to get back out there again after that big barn burner third setter. And they're going to get back out there tonight and see if they can make their way to the final for tomorrow morning when, you know, everybody's going to be watching just like they are now. And we've got, uh, you know, Hanish Zabori. Uh, you know, they've won many times. They're legends. They made their way through fairly easily out of the quarterfinals against Kerry Delmonico and Lauren Gebbia, 6-2, 6-4. And we've got Halbauer and Nicolescu made their way through really without too much work, quite frankly. A little surprising with against Cruz and Lopez to have such an easy result, don't you think, Patty? Yeah, I mean, they, Halbauer and Nicolescu just played lights out in that match. Um, and, and Jeff, it was kind of like a flashback to Jeff Morneau days when you just fired away, you had that quick release. I mean, you had the unique shot on the planet, I gotta say. A two-handed whatever, are you a lefty, are you a righty, you can't decide, so just master them both, that's kind of what you did. But I mean, the play of Nicolescu and Hal Ballard from the baseline in particular, I mean, any short ball, any short lob that Lopez Cruz hit, they just pounced and just really had no answers. and. You know, we've always seen the Nicolescu overhead just dominate play, and she did dominate play. And the bad news for everyone else out there, how Baller hit a couple of those roller overheads as well, and they really kind of carved up Cruz and Lopez. Didn't have any answers from the baseline against those two. Yeah, when you got this particularly extremely warm weather, 
and you got players that are all trying to play the same style and you've got one team that's really dominating it's going to be a quick match like that and so um, you know Nicolescu and Halbauer got through pretty quickly and then of course Burris and Elliott who are facing off tonight on this live stream match against Halbauer and Nicolescu also made their way through relatively clean 6-3, 6-1 so I don't expect anybody on this court to be tired in any way the weather is still extremely warm so we'll see sort of how this one all pans out. They're warming up their serves right now, getting close to the start of this match. You can see the umpire up in the chair, volunteering her great time out there. It's, it's actually a good day to be an umpire. I talked about this a little bit earlier to some of the umpires who are doing the men's matches. And normally you're up there, it's freezing cold. You know these matches are gonna be long, they're gonna be tight you got to pay super attention to everything that's going on but tonight with this phenomenal crowd i mean honestly short hills does such a spectacular job there are hundreds of people floating around here i think actually if you want to put it all together we're probably getting to the thousands for people that have come and gone here throughout oh, the day it's don't amazing you think? yeah it's so remarkable, the camaraderie in this community. And they're knowledgeable, Jeff. Like, y you go around and everybody's asking questions. And, and they know the game, they know the tactics, and they know the players. Yeah, this is a hot, this is a, a hot spot, a hot bed for platform tennis. And it has been for decades. It's, you know, it's, it's a premier event. You say you won Short Hills. It means everything. It, it really does. It's probably, you know, apart from winning nationals, it's probably the tournament to win because it's been around and it's been in existence for so long 73 years they've got so many events that take place we've had you know you've got the, the men's open the men's Welcome grand prix the men's 95 the women's the women's b the 110 i mean chris humphreys and the entire staff here has done a spectacular job. They right. put out great food, they put on a great event, and that's why people come out In the deuce no court. matter what the weather, despite the great weather today, which makes it easy to come out. From Cincinnati, but even when it's Ohio, horrible weather, Elizabeth it's cold Paul and it's Bauer. raining, there's always hundreds of people And her partner playing here. in the ad court from Reading, Connecticut, Gabby Nicolescu. You hear the voice of them, Mark Marker left. Green. In the ad court from Morris Plains, Lynn Barish. Her partner, who will be playing in the Deuce Court from Wilton, Connecticut, Macy Elliott. Paul Bauer Nicolescu won the toss and has elected to receive. Yeah, it seems to be a very common thing too in platform tennis is that whoever wins the toss typically elects to receive because, as we know, especially in warm weather, it's really you know, it's really hard to hold serve. The ball's just flying all around. So I'm expecting to see some really exciting paddle out here tonight, especially, you know, I haven't had a chance to, to watch a lot of these players. I've, you know, obviously I know Gabby Nicolescu because she's been around a long time and she's got, you know, she just a, can be a very dominant player at times. I mean, she can really just take over a court. So I'm Baller kind of made a name for herself. She's played for a couple of years um, out of Cincinnati with Jill Jackson. She's ranked in the top 12 in the country twice currently. After the, after I think 16. she's number nine or something with Jackson. Number How seven, Baller? I think you were saying Number earlier, 10. Well, I make up stuff as I go along, I Vera. Uh, I just fill in space. Um, and, you know, Nicolescu, three-time women's national champ, uh, played with Anika. They were uh, number two team in the country, finalist in nationals last year. and. These guys tooled up this year, and I've watched the progression of uh, Ellie Hubbauer throughout the season. And, you know, it'll just, the question is, can they be on the same page? Can Gabby and Ellie kind of be in sync in terms of what needs to be done with a matchup? And you're up against our number one for the first time in a couple of years. Uh, Elliot and Burris are ranked number one, and they've just edged out um, Hannes and Zabori. So they are our defending national champs and the tournament number one seeds. And it's always hard to bet against them, but fascinating because Nicolescu and Habal are just crushed Cruz Lopez in the, in the quarterfinals, and we'll see if they uh, have cooled off at all. I kind of doubt it. I feel like they're going to come out firing. Yeah, you, I mean, a little, here we go. I mean, a little, you know, they're both teams kind of strategizing here even before the match. I mean, with all, Players you would have thought they've talked kind of all about serve. their strategy beforehand, but here we go. We're about to get started. 
And serving is going to be Burris taking, taking the serve. Nice hard serve there. Got lobbed right off the start as opposed to a drive. You see Elliott, nice touch shot there. Person Elliott last year, they uh, kind of changed the game they, with their win here in the Short Hills event last season. Um, and that kind of launched them, gave them a lot of confidence. And they pulled out a uh, win in the Nationals together. Macy Elliott's second win. Um, Macy won Nationals a couple years ago with Marcella Redesno. Yeah, like I said, you know, it'd be very interesting to statistics, uh, Patty, if somebody were to go back in time and really evaluate whether any national champion or how often the national champion came out of the finals of Short Hills, whether it be they were in the you know in the finals or, or won it. And it would be a very interesting statistic for uh, APTA to kind of pull out because I think like we were talking about before, a little miss there by Nicolescu, I believe, right? Over there on the backhand yep. court, but you know, taking taking her shot. But it'd be very interesting to see because this is really the prelude to Yeah, I think you're you, spot on, Jeff. Yeah, when you come out of when you come out of Short Hills as the winner, you I, I don't care sort of where you come from, whether you were the first seed here or whether you were the eighth seed, 30, men's 15. or women's draw, you come out of Short Hills having made the finals here, you be almost immediately become one of the uh, one of the contenders for nationals. Thirty all. I mean that just got absolutely lit up like a Christmas tree that forehand right there. Whacked on through and Burris didn't even move. And I'm a little surprised actually given the warm weather that she didn't turn around and try to chase that one down and kind of put a lob back up but when Nicolescu gets a look, you know that there's only one thing that's going to happen, and that's going to be she's going to put the hammer down and 30, smack that forehand. Yeah, and I think Nicolescu is gaining a lot of confidence with how about, and that I think that frees up Gabby because she doesn't feel the pressure that she has to win every point on her drive or roll her overheads, and it kind of lets her settle into an amazing game, game. because she can play defensive paddle all day long, but. The All woman back. has the Nicolescu offensive weapons that are, can dominate. One love in the first time. I mean, that, sh that shot right there, I mean, it comes Yay. off the backside because it's so warm. And I'm a little surprised there with that ball coming so far into the court, knowing Nisco Nicolescu has that power that Elliot just didn't turn sideways and mm. thin herself and let that thing go through because. You know Nicolescu's not lobbing that ball. It's gonna get hit 100 miles an hour and it's gonna play its way through. So a little surprised that, that Elliot, with all of her experience actually tried to volley that, but we've got a one nothing lead here for Halbauer and Nicolescu, Nicolescu to serve. Well Jeff and Vera, we see a ton of transition game in the men's game and you know, they're, they kind of automatically part the ways and just let the ball go through up the middle, but there aren't as many women who hit the ball that hard that you know no matter what it's coming through and playing out. So they're, you know, I don't, I, I don't think that's a strategy that Burris and Elliott in a lot of their matches so far this year have even yeah, utilized very a, much. Definitely not an automatic strategy by them, but in this match and in this weather conditions, looks like they will have to watch out for those uh, big ground strokes coming at them. Well, and and that's, we'll right, and that's the thing with Nicolescu, I mean, her shot, she's dominated the game. Every year she's played, she, she reaches the semi of the finals of women's nationals and she does possess. Uh, you know, if I had to pick one forehand that's just money on the women's store, on demand, I think it's Nicolescu's forehand. Yeah, she just plays a very aggressive, she plays a very aggressive style under all circumstances. She's not afraid to pull the trigger no matter what the score in the match is or the you know, score in a game. She likes to play aggressively. Oh. 
often yep. see that shot 30. was used by uh, Ellie Halbauer a lot in her quarterfinals match. And that became a lot of success. They were picking on Liz Cruz in the do side corner. So we'll see if they're still planning on using that strategy going after Macy Elliott on the do side. You know, for Halbauer or Nicolescu, I hope not, because I don't think they'll get away with it, personally. I think if they're up against a very different kind of team. A very dynamic team, for sure. Yeah, Both. and and I, and I think that's what happens. Like, you have some shots that get you through certain rounds, and then all of a sudden you have to figure out the, the next matchup and what shot's going to be effective. And I just think Halbauer hitting from way off the net as the player to 30, the right 40. on the court could open up a little too much court for Macy Elliott. Yeah, we'll say I, I watched Halbauer miss that shot right there, and also miss on her um, on her attempted roller. But you know what that tells me is that she has a lot of confidence. She's not like just sitting there trying to set up Nicolescu because she's the more experienced or better player. She's there to play. She's got a lot of confidence one, in one. herself yep. and in her own in game to make those shots. She's not, you know, she's in the moment right now. This is her first semifinals, I believe, in like a really, you know, a she's really, really big event. But she's clearly got to have a lot of experience in her, you know, tennis or paddle background to be able to do that um, and just be confident. Yeah, I believe she played a very high level uh, professional tennis. Pro tennis, yep. Yes, and she was, uh, she played in Germany up until last year. I believe her last year was one of the, might have been the first year she really got into paddle, so this is yeah, and she's been a tremendous success. Yeah, and they've, they've been in three semis this year, Jeff. Uh, Chicago Charities, they went out against Hanish and Zabori, 7-5, seven, 7-6, seven, they were right in there. Detroit, it wasn't as close. Um, and Philly Cricket event, they lost in the semis. You know, in the other matchup against Burris and Elliott. And so, but I think Habaler has a lot more matches under her wing here. And, and my thing is, tactically, when you've got Nicolescu's overhead, two of you don't have to hit that same overhead. Like, I don't think she needs to force anything out here because just let the play play out. And this Nicolescu can deliver the point ending overhead a huge amount. But I also think. Uh, that you're going to see from Elliott and Burst better lobbing than we saw from Cruz and Lopez in that quarterfinal, and that's going to make a big, that's going to make the big difference in this match, I think. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I mean, that, that, that's part of it. I mean, it's clear that you know, it's sort of like, you know, I haven't watched a lot of paddle this year, and obviously I haven't commentated that much, but I would relate. I just got to watch Nunez for the first time on the men's side. I actually just stood courtside and watched him play for the first time. I'd heard a lot about him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got a tennis background, and 30, I hear 15. all this great, great stuff. And it's very similar. You can see, like, he may not have a lot of paddle experience, but he plays with an extreme high level of confidence in himself and his own ability. And I can already see that in Harbauer, that that's very similar in terms of like, I mean, look at this, like that, look at that, it's just awesome to see that. And look at the confidence and the go and to be able to do that and not really, you know, have a lot of experience on the paddle court just shows that, you know, I'm confident. I'm I, I'm as good, if not better than everybody else. And that's just how I yep. feel that she feels about herself. So, you know, Nicolescu is not gonna be asking her to, her to lob, so. It's going to be great. I think Nicolescu, to her credit, is giving Hal Baller some room. Like, she understands she's going to make some choices that maybe aren't going to be the smartest choices at all times. But I think she's just kind of riding the wave and letting Ellie yeah. just improve match after match, tournament after tournament. And, you know, the eye on the prize for these guys Game. is national. Totally. Look at them. They're right there. They're still going strong. Hal They're Bauer very confident. Two, two folds by Elliot and in the first set. Yeah, we're now good. we got a, a little lead for Hall Bauer and Nicolescu, and they will serve it up. Got a little changeover. They're going to shake some hands, and it's a very quick changeover. But you can see taking some time talking through, and Nicolescu, with all of her experience, is just probably talking Hall Bauer through some strategy and a couple of things here and there. And it's just it's really really good to see some new people, new faces, mm -hmm. new teams, and. You know, Nicolescu's played, played and won with a lot of different people. Oh, yeah. And so 
it's nothing, it's, you know, it's nothing new for her. 15 left. Cielli with a little bit of a long drive there, stepped way into the court, had a good swing at it, but just happened to miss it. Nikolescu won three nationals that we talked about. She won in 2016 with Martina Andrekova. They beat Darz and Shea in the finals there. She won in 2018 with Liz Cruz, beating Hanisha Cooper. She won in 2019 with Liz Cruz, beating Baron and Anika. She was a finalist with Cruz again in 21, where Hanish and Zabori won. She was a finalist with Anika in 22. Oh finals with an Anika in 23. 15 off. Yeah. Nikolescu is built to get to the finals in women's nationals. Watch out. Yeah, and she and she's built for having a partner with a lot of skill and talent that just needs a little bit of experience and knowledge of, you know, the strategy of paddle. And she's got somebody just like that right now. And how about her? It's kind of fun, Jeff. We were talking about it earlier, how, you know, you see Cruz teaming up with Lopez, who's fairly new into the game, and how about her new into the game, and what a gift for them to be able to team up with people the caliber of a Nicolescu, Liz Cruz, national champs, just give them the mental part of that game and just how to be super competitive throughout these grinding weekends of battle. Some really good play right there. They've got kind of the one-up, one-back strategy right now with um, Nicolescu playing the net. Albauer was in the back. We have one men's quarterfinal still underway. Uh, Chris Humphries and Felipe Osascone are out there in a war with Tomas Christian and Eric West. The winner of that uh, will come up against Durant Mitchell, who pulled out, pulled out their three-set win over Bostrom Rams. The other side, McNerney what Powers. A shot right there Frazier by Halbauer wow. down the line off of the back screen. Just absolutely ripped it. Yeah, and I did like, I, you know, it was a little bit like to see the sort of the reset, right? You saw Burris there was running backwards, tried to make a 40, big play. 15. Probably the play there is just reset, especially in the warm weather. You're gonna get a better look than the one that Burris had right there. And Halbauer is far from slow. I mean, she got right back in on top of the net. Game, Halbauer Nicolescu. So far, we're seeing similar energy from Halbauer and Nicolescu comparing to their quarters match. Um, Jeff, not sure if you got to witness some points there, but like Patty said earlier, it was a pretty yeah, one-sided out. show, lights out, very confident, and similar word that you've been using, a lot of confidence, a lot of power and energy behind the Hall Bauer and Nicolescu team, um, and so far they're dominating the set as well. Yeah, well, they're just riding their wave. You know, they got that confidence, and that's, that's your point you keep driving home, that you love to see this, and how Bauer, just a newer player on tour, but she's got that confidence, that belief in herself, and that she can be out there, and here she's playing against. 100%. You know? I mean, you can see it just in her body language. I mean, she missed two, just early on, she missed two back-to-back -back shots, right? She missed the roller, and then she missed something else. And you haven't seen her slow down and be like, oh, okay, I think I just got to put these in and let Gabby take over. Absolutely no. not. This is not This is not the Gabby Nicolescu show over there. This is a, t this is a team. And they, they are really trying to figure out, you know, they're figuring out their way here as the season progresses. But it is interesting, I mean, they even had the one up, one back thing going for a little while where, you know, Nicolescu was taking control. She was just hitting that roller. And you're watching, you know, you're you're watching like high, really high quality players, the Macy Elliott's, the Lynn Burris's. They're running forward and they're, they're getting there and they're hitting the ball and Nicolescu's just standing it. She's just standing in there and taking it. And this warm weather really plays into that for Nicolescu. I really think she likes the warm weather and this fast action play. So the quicker the points are, the better for her. Yeah, Nicolescu looks very comfortable with that style of play. And Jeff, like you mentioned, the one up, one back play especially with Gabby Nicolescu staying at the net and taking those volleys. And Paul Bauer dropping back and looking to drive that ball off the screen if it does get past them. I mean, that's a really good through ball right there and a great athletic ability there by Nicolescu to get back and put that back in play. 15 left. 
But I, I would just say, tactically, I do like it when Gabby's to the left of the players at the net, and I think that's what she's really comfortable playing from that shot. Her forcing her shot from the right position, not as effective going after Macy Elliott, in my opinion, in the deuce court. So uh, I'll look for Nick Ileski to be initiating a switch, kind of like a lefty-righty team, and getting herself over there. You know, I was thinking the same thing too, Patty, when I was watching that, is that it seemed to me that they were kind of on the wrong sides while Nicolescu was going after that. And I would, I'll say this too, is that, Thirty left. there, even, but when you, when Nicolescu is going at it from the right-hand side, from the forehand court, I think she's got to, instead of going sort of to the seam and then trying to move somebody around, I think she's just got to go right for the neck. You know, mm -hmm. the old Mark, as I call it, the Mark Parsons, Mark Parsons shot. We talked about that earlier today. Was, you know, the guy's just, ability to hit the nick. I mean, yeah, feet. and I think Nicolescu probably has that ability, but she's got to go for it, right? And then it makes just the person in the forehand court so uncomfortable. Is it going to go down the line? Is it going to go left? Especially in the warm weather. Yeah, that's a good point, Jeff. Yeah. Huge yeah. game for Bruce and Elliot here if they can come yeah. back and make it a 2-3 down as opposed to 1-4 make that's a huge difference right there. Boom. Let court. What, yeah, those are always 15. tough. You know, and even right there, I, I just think Nicolescu, you know, she hit it, they hit a great lob, they had somebody back, but she hit that a little bit too hard under the weather. Came off the screen was really leaving an offensive opportunity for uh, for the other team and they took advantage of it and made a, a great shot. Certainly the let court helped, but Either way, I think it was going to be a challenging volley for Nicolescu. Burr is here with a few faults mm -hmm. in this match. Is that, you know, I haven't watched a lot of the women's paddle. Is that, is that, has that been a, a problem throughout the season? I don't think it's been a problem for her. I mean, she hits it, she goes big, as you can see. Um, Just a lot of adjustments to warm weather today from all players. And uh, Hal Bauer and Nicolescu have handled it perfectly, but we can see some errors from even from Elliott and Bursch on missing a few lobs long, mistiming a few of their drives, and yeah, the weather is going to be a huge factor today. And coming in, you know, they are the new number one team in women's paddle, and you know, they're they're out there. You know, they've got to prove themselves. And Nicolescu and Hal Bauer could care less that they're number one. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're I, like we got we're in the top four in the rankings with their semi in Detroit. Got them in the top four for the first time this year, and that's they've I mean, got the position they need to go into nationals. Yeah, I mean great, know, and I just saw some great court. I mean, great court positioning by Halbauer right there. Saw that Nicolescu had hit kind of a little bit too hard of a drive, and that Elliott was going to have a good down the line, and you saw Halbauer just move back. To be able to chase that one down, Burris hits that one a little Dude. wide. Maybe should have played that one off the screen as opposed to off the deck, but you know, here we go. 40-30, 40-30. Burris Elliott in this game. Actually, it's Deuce right now. Down 3-1. Lobs, yeah. lobs and return, gets it back in play. Spinner yeah. there. Nicolescu with the deep lob there, and you know you're going to get that ripped forehand. Yeah. Wow, I I'm, love that yeah. move from Al Bowler right there. Nicolescu. That's what I'm saying. Like that, that's a very experienced move, mm. not just for somebody who's so new to the platform tennis game, but it's also an understanding of your partner that, you know, Nicolescu, she's got a power shot, but she didn't power that one. She hit it down low. How Bauer moved in and closed and finished the point. I mean, high quality team. Burris with another fall. It's really been a problem in this match so far. I think in the first game that she served as well, it was a little bit of a problem. Yep, we'll talk about it after this. Go ahead, Vera. Bali is the proud sponsor of the APTA. As the first AI-enabled training experience, Bali modernizes racket sports by delivering the on-demand dynamic system for live play training and better workouts. Bali creates a community to connect pros and players while giving personalized performance insights to track progress and customize their practice. Ask your pro about a Bali lesson today. For more information, visit getbali.com. So, Jeff, uh, first, 
I mean, a lot of confidence as a player. Elliot, a lot of confidence. But the new number ones, and that was a little bit shaky, but you were talking right before that sponsor read about Nicolescu, and I think Nicolescu is playing a phenomenal tournament. We saw the quarterfinals this afternoon, and the dipping ball that then allowed How Ballard to make the move forward. You know, if Nicolescu hits that ball harder, How Ballard can't make that move. But you know, with Nicolescu, who your lights out, ready for a 75 mile an hour drive, and then she only hits it 45 miles an hour. And, you know, you catch the person a little bit deeper off the net. You know, they almost have to pop that ball up. So. Really good combination play there. Yeah, I mean that. I mean that's a that's a that's a tactic, especially in you know the, in, in this type of weather. As Nicolescu misses a, a rare miss there by Nicolescu on a on a roller, just didn't get back far enough. Or and she was in an awkward spot. She was right at the tee, and yeah, you know sometimes I've seen her partners will switch over and let her just go to the left position. You know, if you're staring at the net, the player to the left, that's where she loves playing. Oh, got right on top there. A really good try. She's not happy with herself there, but it's kind of a tricky little shot when it's that close and you're not on top of the net yet. She tried that heavy roller, it just didn't work out. Love 30. Yeah, she had a huge grip, way over. I think she and was couldn't make a it. grip adjustment there. Yeah, it was a little too low to make that shot. Got 4-1, Nicolescu, Alvauer. Really kind of dominated play for the most part. I wouldn't say dominated is probably a bit of an exaggeration. I mean, they're dominating at least on the scoreboard, but. Yeah, they've gotten the key points. Yeah. 15-30. You know, that's another one there. Like, El you know, in this warm weather, Macy Elliott is going to get a better look than that, than the 360 turnaround right. over the top shot right you're gonna get a you're gonna get a better look in the warmer weather that one I just think needs to be lobbed up maybe not the best decision right there 30 15 though Burris Elliott great I've seen, I've seen Elliott make that move and kind of go with an off-speed ball Jeff like a little off-speed floater low yeah which might have been the, the ideal shot right there yeah well, I mean you know the 361 is that's a 40 love shot right there. Or 40, you know, 40 love, 40 15. You're going for something, or you're down, trying to make something happen. But here they need to get back into it. They need to get into a, you know, maybe slower, consistent play. Yeah, they're trying to figure out, and obviously I think you have to go after How Balor. I don't think I think it's a no brainer. Yeah, really good shot there by Macy Elliott. Had it was a short lob. Macy Elliott with a really good roller. It was nice and low. Yeah, Hallbauer really had a hard time getting it. She's getting a little bit, eh, I'm going to say a tutorial, but she's getting mm -hmm. some instruction right here by Nicolescu. Tip of the week by APTA by Gabby Nicolescu during yeah. the match. And that's okay. Hallbauer is going to take it. I mean, why not? I, I know would. there are many members of Nicolescu's club that pay a lot of money, as they should, for those types of lessons, and Hallbauer is getting it for free. Yep, and if you can make an adjustment during a match, that those are the little differences that you know separate players. Like we said, it's, it doesn't feel like a four-one match necessarily, but every little bit counts, Yay. especially for, for Nicolescu and How about in my opinion. Yeah, that was a big game right there to get themselves back into the set. You know, she hit that one hard, and you know there, and she just but that's so. There's two parts to that, right? One is, in retrospect, you'd say, oh, yep. she should have just bailed because, yep. the, because you know, Elliot was going to get it or whatever the case may be. But the other part that I really like, and I know I'm repeating myself, is that Hallbauer has so much confidence to just stay in there and take it. And so that is a really good sign for them, I think, long term as you get kind of heading towards, heading towards nationals. Her confidence is just growing. Her decision making will get better. You know, one of the things why I want Nicolescu on the left side for that team is that on that play when Elliot took it at Haubauer, Haubauer doesn't really commit to a backhand volley. She's Not equal opportunity to volley, so she's stand, so she's there, and she couldn't close forward with a, you know, and, and have the wall of backhands going in that play. And Elliot just picked her pocket on that shot. So that's why, you know, I wouldn't, you never see Nicolescu do that anymore. When Nicolescu first started in the game, she had a ton of forehand volleys, 
where she's way committed to the backhand when she's in a defensive mode. All. And you know someone's bringing the heat. You just got to eliminate backswing. You got to eliminate the follow through. And it looked like how Baller went over at the last second and got yeah. a backswing and a follow through where you got to eliminate both of those little things. Yeah, I think we got 15 all in this game. I'm not completely sure, but it's 4 2. Oh. Good move by there by Burris to duck out of the way. Nicolescu now on the left hand side hitting her patented roller all over the place. Really trying to take advantage of Burris there. Thought that ball might have been going wide. is doing a good job with height on the lobs here. Keeping Nicolescu a little bit, you know, hitting from beyond the service line versus inside the service line. Yeah, good play there by Burris. I mean, they hit a good lob. They got Hallbauer to hit one a little bit flatter. It was a good opportunity there by Burris, and she just hit that one a little bit long. It looked like she was trying to get it. He had Hallbauer off of the net, was trying to get it at her feet, but it didn't work. Nicolescu puts that lob in. Yeah, really good serve right there from Elliott down 15-30. I thought Nicolescu would just be ready to tee off. Great serve right up into her body. She threw up the lob. And Nicolescu zeroing in on Burris over there in that ad court here. And I like the play, just kind of keep her pinned in, keep her pinned in. But again, there's Hobbauer on top of the net. You could see she was a little yeah. indecisive there. You She's know, in a good spot. I mean, honestly, that's Nicolescu. That's a little bit on Nicolescu the, the, and the weather. The placement of the A little overhead. bit, yeah, yep. the placement of the overhead. And you know, I'm not going to lie, a little bit of the weather as well. Oh, what a good get there. You know, you hit these, like, if you... Just the weather, when you're hitting those rollers, if they come out a little bit too far, it's they're tough to handle. Right. Good push overhead. Okay. Great lob. Going to go in transition. 40-30. I mean, that's, that's not one hell bower I think usually misses. I mean, she moved back, tried to put that one really just do nothing with it. She was really just trying to put it back in play and kind of missed it wide. Big point here. Burgelli looking to get a little closer to catching up in the first set. And one thing, Patty, that we talked about actually in a different tournament was um, about Elliot switching her serve to mm -hmm. an overhead serve. And do you think it complements her in today's weather or do you think the well, there she went back she to the push because she, she kind of honed to that, that serve. When she won nationals, you know, I have never seen anything like that serve. She just threw that ball low and out in front and kind of just pushed it, like kind of high-fiving the ball over the net. Well, I mean, this this is like the, mom, you know, these are like momentum shifters, right? We've had four. It was 4-1. It's now 4-3. little miss there by Nicolescu on a, on a roller. And it's really hard, Patty and Vera. I, it's really, I mean, I, I can't hit a roller. I only hit flat and slice. So, I mean, I don't even i don't even know how they do it. I mean, it's so spectacular to be able to do it. And Nicolescu's great at it. I mean, she's as good as anybody in the country at doing it, men or women. And it's really hard to do, though, from behind the baseline. I mean, sorry, behind, behind the, service the service line. line. And that one there, she went for that behind the service line. And I, you know, if I had, you know, a, a small piece of advice for Nicolescu, it'd be like, okay, if you're in charge and you're behind the service line, push that overhead. Because you're going to get a shorter one event. You're going to get a shorter one eventually. And then that's where your roller can really be effective. It's not going to be effective from behind the service line. 15. Well, I've never seen someone who it is, and you've never really, except for Nicolescu. Because I feel like when she's feeling it, I've seen her hit it from three quarters depth. And it, you know, it depends on the opposition and where they're positioning themselves. And if they're playing deep, you know, she's gonna get away with it. If she's you know, pushed back and she's deeper, I've seen some players will kind of take a risky move and just try to cut the ball off a little sooner and try to catch her 
from well beyond the service line for the next the follow up next shot. The other semifinal is neck and neck for all between Hanish Zabori and Morgan Sakura. Well, this one's not far off. It's four three, so it's very similar. Oh, what a great shot there! What a great 30, roller! What I really like about that roller really stays so low. You see a bunch of other ones coming up a little bit high. Kind of chip it in, but yeah, it was so good. She had to catch it. Over. You nailed, 40, you nailed it. And you know what it was? It was a little bit of a softer type of roller that still made its way to the back screen where she couldn't take it off the deck. And it was really the pace of the roller that made the 40, difference. 30. Yeah, I think if they're looking to continue using these shots throughout this match, they're going to have to add some variety because Elliot and Burrish are a very physical team. And they're going to be able to figure out how to get to those really hard balls into the back screen. So you have to mix it up with your all bowing question. You know, see, I like that play better from Nicolescu. And I, I like when it's the lob is that good, that's what I like better. And then you get this one, right? You can do a little bit more with it. I like that. I mean, if I were on that, if I were on that side of the, if you're rooting for that side of the V, that's a better shot until it gets short. Huge point right here. A lot of the teams want to make that unforced error that ends the game. That 40-30 here. You know, even that one there, right? It, a little bit hard. I don't know, you know, I, I haven't watched enough to know whether Burris has a big backhand that she can spin. That one a little bit hard to Elliot, but she kind of ripped it again. That same one she had, if you walk, go back and watch that, she had to move a little left, and then she had to get out of the way, and then right again, so she really isn't gonna be in perfect position to hit that. So probably needed to, you know, probably lob that one up, a little rush. Yeah, she seems to be having a little issue with that particular shot, as you mentioned, Jeff. We've seen that one a few times now. So if you're Elliot, you're looking to figure that one out as the match goes on. Burrish serving. Yeah. Down 3-5. Macy Elliott hitting the overhead. Far side, deuce court. Ellie Haubauer. Yeah. Far side, at court. Gabby Nicolescu. Lap 15. See, again, that was that little dipping ball just in front of Burris and kind of caught her just short hopping that ball in the warm temp and the ball floated yeah. out on her. Yeah, and, I, and it, you know, I watch, I, I, I do watch a little bit of women's paddle. Mm -hmm. I think it's very, I think it's great Not to watch, 30. especially for, you know, men or women players at home. I think it's it, it strategically, it's easier to- It's relatable I, for it's most re, club level it, players. Absolutely relatable. It's relatable for me. Um, never mind, you know, club players is for, you know, people who are playing strategic paddle or, you know, exactly, you can Two relate. You can, around. Yeah, Burris is having, definitely having some trouble with her serve since the beginning of this match. It's been a little bit of a problem, you know, kind of gifts. And, and, and I'm, it's just, honestly, it's, it could be the warm weather. Absolutely. made up for one of them with that with that one. 15-40. Nick, and you know, again, it's, look at the confidence. She's had some problems with her serve, and boom, right into the neck. Hammers it. Yeah, saved one set point there. Yeah, this is what I want to see from Elliot. She's got a lot of variety with her overheads. How about, how about her, you know, not known for exceptional screen play, but phenomenal deck play. You can see how she's just short hopping, kind of, she's got the hands and she's kind of blocking that, not letting them go into the screens. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say we're gonna go after yeah, Al on the screens because she's only played battle through a couple of years, but I mean, that's the tennis easier background, said than right? Done. So anything off the deck, they're good with. This is where it gets a problem. Oh, what a great 30, shot 40. there by Macy Elliott. A little low roller right down the line, no chance yep. to get that. Beautiful shot there by Elliot. And how about her?
watch versus if you don't know, you've got to commit and just run up that side screen and pray you can come up with that shot. Yeah. I mean, it was a, as I call it, it was a craptacular lob by Nicolescu that set that up and gave Elliott the opportunity, but it was still, you still got to execute and make the shot. Found the Nick twice in this game to come back. Oh, no, come on. Dude. All right, and Paul Bauer went for a little too much on that back and drive. Just like that, we're right back with Deuce. Save three set points in a row. Yeah, that was, I mean, a, that might have been one of her worst decisions of the match to try to take that inside out backhand drive at set point. In the, uh, you know, I'm repeating myself again a little bit, but in this warm weather, you're going to get a good look. That's not the look that you necessarily want to take at that particular moment. We got add in here. First right? You see how that changed, right? So quickly. Now it's add in. It could be 5-4. It could end up being 5-4 after this one point. One good serve into the neck again. And if you're Hal Bauer and Nicolescu, this is where experience starts setting in. Hopefully, if they lose this game, they can rebound. And if you're Nicolescu and Hal Bauer, you don't want to lose that confidence. And you don't want to think about those missed set points that you just had. You saw first down, love 40, and hits a Nick winner ace, you know, at that point, and that's the that's what makes her, you know, an Number amazing one. player. Just her ascent in our sport very quick. She came into it, and everybody was like, she's going to be the next really one to win that. Really good shot there by Gabby Nicolescu right into the Nick. You saw Macy Elliott there again, though. She did the, she got this one. She got that one last time, which was the 360 move with the forehand. But it's so risky if you're just not in position to do that shot. Yeah, and I like that oh, both teams seem to be mixing in different paces on their rollers, not just Yabby yeah, Nicolescu, but they're all looking to start doing that. Advantage Another for missed Elliot. drop down the line from Hall Bauer. Yeah, that screenplay becoming a little bit of an issue here on the big point. She's going to have to, you know, a little bit of spin in there on the screen. It comes off the paddle, goes sideways. That's maybe just a little bit of the experience factor. Oh my God, what a return by Nicolescu. Uh, we can definitely say these leads are not oh. afraid to play to win. Burris served at about 100 miles an hour and it came back at 120. too hard right there. I think that's the thing, Nicolescu can handle it. Like she almost hits it, feeds it. She doesn't care if Elliot comes out swinging. Yeah. Because Gabby loves that confrontation. She loves that moment. But you have a partner and your partner may not love it. Right, you exactly. Know, you, when you're doing it, you're already meant, when you're hitting it like that, you're mentally prepared. You know what you're doing. So you're, you've got that extra oh, bigness Just. there by Elliot. Yeah, that spinning, spinning move. Drive. I agree, Jeff is just, she's pulling that trigger too soon. They can be in this at any moment. Got a little deuce action here in this game. Burris about to serve, down 5-3. Big game right here. Yeah. You know, there, there's a serve right there too that, I mean, just a little bit, you no, know, I'm not here to give advice. I'm certainly no pro by any stretch of the imagination, but why not, why not, why, why doesn't she let that go to the screen of that Burris big serve? And then you, at least you yeah. can, you, you always have the option to lob it, but if it comes off in your wheelhouse, I mean, just like that, like she's got a big forehand, right? She's just block returning it. Like if it hits that back screen, she could, mm -hmm. if she got a little more comfortable with the screens here, out. Advantage. Potter going forward. How about Nicolescu? Yeah, I think as a, an experienced tennis player, but perhaps someone newer to the paddle scene, even though we have discussed Ellie Haldauer's amazing results this season. I'm not sure if she has in, have really gotten comfortable with that mentality that screens are your friends and that they're there to provide you more time for better Service decision out. yet. But that nevertheless, set, it looks like they got Nicolescu. the first set. Yeah, another Took fall by Burris, set. and the first set's over, 6-3. Six, six, we will be right back in just a moment after these messages right here on the APTA YouTube channel presented by My Paddle. At Corient, we believe wealth management begins and ends with you. 
because the more personal the solution, the more powerful it is. We treat your goals as our own. We never lose focus on the life you want to build and provide unlimited access to the collective and profound knowledge of experts across the country. It's time your wealth strategy was as sophisticated as you. It's time to join Corient. Hello, this is John Weinleiter with Volley, and we're here at the Philly Open having a great time. So exciting to be out here at the second Grand Prix event and seeing all the momentum that's being gathered this season. Uh, it's been great being a partner with the APTA, and we've been excited with all the momentum with Volley as well. And we're about ready to hit our half millionth ball right now on all the trainers. So it's pretty exciting that people are finding the product and talking about it. To keep track of all the new stuff going on with Volley, follow us on social or visit our website, getvolley.com. Thank you. Welcome back to the APTA Tour. We are in a semifinal matchup here where we just saw Nicolescu and Haveller uh, win the first set 6-3 over our defending national champs, Burris and Elliott. I'm Patty Hogan along with Vera Basanova, one of the teaching pros here at the Short Hills Club. And Mr. Jeff Morneau, who will be, will be back shortly. I think he just went out to say hello to the first Love 400 team. people he runs into. Great ca crowd gathering. It's the world's, one of the world's biggest cocktail parties goes on Short Hills Club on Saturday afternoon. So much fun and great matchups here in the semifinals today, Vera. 15 all. And just phenomenal play. Nicolescu and Hal Baller just crushed in their quarters and, you know, continue that came out. And I expected them to start really strong and they didn't disappoint. And, now it's going to be up to our defending national champs, Burris and Elliot, to see what adjustments they can make. See if they can figure out a way to cool off Nicolescu and Halbauer. Yeah, Halbauer and Nicolescu have had tremendous confidence since their quarters, quarterfinal match. And um, they have been able to carry it into this match, even though the score has been closer. But they truly have been in control of the match. And uh, we almost saw... Burish and Elliot be able to catch up. They started catching up with 1 4. 40, got it down to 3 4 and saved some set points in the first set, but unfortunately came up just a little bit short. And right off the bat, we're seeing Nikulescu serving, and I believe it might be. It's like 40 15 right here in the first game. Fear, do we have an update on men's quarterfinal action? We do. We have Humphreys, Osses Koenig playing Christian and West. Christian West took the first set 7-6. Humphreys, Osses Koenig took the second set 6-4. Humphreys and Osses Koenig are currently up 4-1 in the third set against Christian and West. Yeah, that's a barn burn. I mean, that's been going on for a couple of hours out there in that warm weather. And, you know, that's just the way paddle can be played. And, and if I had to be like a little bit of a predictor here, I don't know how long that first set was here in this match. It wasn't very long. The points were relatively quick. I would like to say that in this particular set, it 30, would surprise 40. me if it didn't go significantly longer. And if you saw a little bit of slower play out of Burris and Elliott. Typically, when you lose that first set, I think if they were to reassess, I think they'd say they played a little bit too quickly and a little bit into Nicolescu's game in terms of playing fast. First Elliott. And Hallbauer. First Elliott exactly lead one love in the second set. It looks like Burrish and Elliott are able to start it out. Hallbauer Nicolescu took the first set, six, three. Small lead three. in the second set. Yeah, and an early break. I mean, that's the thing, Nicolescu, for her greatness, you know, isn't really known for hitting a phenomenal serve. It's probably the only <laughs> part of her game that's a little bit of a weak link from time to time. Um, and so that early break, we'll see if that, you know, propels Elliot and Burrs, who need very little to propel them because they are <laughs> phenomenal at all times. But just a little flat starting that match. And yeah. In, in, you know, in, in fair, in, you know, and in fairness, Burrs, this is definitely... You know, Burris is definitely struggling a little bit out there tonight. 
definitely having a little bit of trouble, and I, I think it's primarily the weather. I think it's super warm out, and if you're not used to playing in that, it can be a problem. She's got a very hard serve, and when it's cold temperature, the ball doesn't travel as far. Most of her, most of her faulting has been, you know, at least what I, what I can remember from the last set, has been, has been long, and it's really, you know, she hasn't, she hasn't played great tonight so far. But I, she's got a lot of confidence, and she's going to pull it together. And I really do see this set going. Um, being really, really close and being significantly longer than the last set. I think, Jeff, from last season, Burris definitely is working on her serve, adding a much more action, more spin to the ball, where last year, you know, in the moment she was, I would just see her hit harder and flatter, where she's definitely bringing the spin into it. Um, and, you know, no one's had practice in 55, 60 degrees in a while, so still a little bit 15, under 15 30 you know Elliot. she's still tweaking it i yeah. would say what do you think about that shot that just, Elliot just went I, for i mean Jeff? why that's what i say is I agree. why it was a little why? bit unnecessary at that point why just you know play paddle There's 15 really 40 no for it. yeah she's you know she's she, uh, i i especially when your partner's struggling on her serve yeah and and you know there it is and and i i will say i do like the I think it's really important for Burris to continue to do what she's doing for the long term. Whether it works out tonight or it doesn't, just showing that she's committed to yep. doing, serving the way that she's serving right now is spectacular. Oh, great coverage there by Burris. What a great play. Picked up that nick. They got Nick Lester on the left. Looking to. Good eye, good eye. Game. How about Nicolescu? See, and right there, I thought that How Baller was backing off. She's the player to the right, typically the one who would close and defend against that hard drive. And, you know, Elliot overjuiced it. She didn't have to because How Baller wasn't there. She wasn't taking that lane away from her. Yeah, I'm surprised. That's where we saw Nicolescu earlier in this match hit a couple dippers in that situation. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't seen more of those off pace chip drives from from Elliot and Bursch as they're chasing that hard roller from from Hal Bauer or Nick Lester. 15 left. Yeah, and, you know, I will say that, you know, this is what happens a little bit. Macy Elliott getting a little, I wouldn't say frustrated with her partner, but now, you know, when your partner's not playing their best, you try to do more. And so when the ball sort of like that last point, it looked to me like, okay, I'm gonna, I gotta try to do something. I gotta try to make something happen because, you know, nothing's happening the way that I want it to, and that one went long. But yeah, I have. The best thing you can do is slow the point down, give your, you and your partner a chance to kind 30, of start 15. making better decisions and start executing better at the right times. Yeah, there. I mean, it's it's really hard to do when you're partner isn't playing their best the hard part is to say okay we're going to play slower 30 all right instead of like i'm going to play faster which is doesn't usually work out slowing things down taking your time as a team two missed 30, in a row. and one of them from lynn burrish going for her signature down the line drive straight at the volley player update service partner I'm oh, sorry, Veer, we have an update on the Humphreys Osis Koning match. They're up 4 3 in the second set over Tomas Christian and Eric West. Did I read that wrong? Third set. Sorry. Well, that match has only been going on for about the last four hours. Watch. Come on. Oh, Thankfully, she was Game. pushing it a little bit in that situation. Bruce there. Elliott. Bruce Elliott lead 2 1 in the second set. Yeah, making a little. Making a little run here. Harbaugh Nicolescu took the first set, 6-3. We're still seeing points that are kind of relatively fast. And perhaps they're not going to get much longer. I mean, what do you guys think? Is it just going to be one team staying a little bit more in control of those more aggressive points? Because it's really hard, it seems to be really hard to slow it down in, in the warm weather. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm looking at this and thinking, you know, myself, Vera, I really feel like if 
Elliot and Burris can be a little more patient and wait for the right ball to go after as opposed to going after every opportunity, that that could be a game changer for them. This strat, you know, the, the strategy, you know, the strategy, at least from the backcourt, is really what I'm talking about. Yeah, because they can defend the net. You know, if you take away the faults from Burrs here in this match, then it's kind of yeah, all even, really. And Macy Elliott, I mean, kudos to her with that service motion. You know, she that first point of the game, you see her ball hit that middle screen and take off over toward the ad court. That was impressive. She keeps swinging. You know, I, I, the other thing is you, you could also frustrate Nicolescu a little bit and just, you know, you know it's not going to work out so good. Great lob by Nicolescu in a moment of trouble. Really good play. Yeah, just set her paddle, waited for the ball to meet her paddle, just a little block bomb. You know, with Burris and Elliott, they can play either side, and here they have a switch, and we have Burris over in that deuce court. Which is the way they played most of the season last yep, year and before that's they switched this year. Right, and that's where I think it feeds into a little bit of the tactical stuff that you see from Macy Elliott and what she's oh, capable of. what a big roller there. Lots of power right Third down the up. line. No chance to get it. I mean, even with the speed flying in a deep, really deep in the court off that roller. To chase it down, even with her great speed, wasn't able to get it. That is a, a spectacular shot right there. Oh, there's a little discussion here as to whether that ball crossed. Say it again. So the rule is, if the roller lands on their side of the court from the fence, it's our point. So next time that happens, we need to find a way to watch it. Yeah. Land as best as we can. That's a blind spot for the umpires. That is a blind spot. So it's your call. And I forgot about it. Yeah. It's interesting, Nicholas, you kind of just your reminding the umpire of the rule. Umpire isn't a tough spot to call that one, but I do think in that particular point that the ball did not cross the net. It was a really good shot, but I don't think it crossed. And there it is. 30-15. You know, that one there, another hard shot by Nicholas, way down low, very difficult ball to volley. Especially when you're off the net. She caught Elliot again a couple steps back and so she Nicolescu takes a tiny bit off and gets the ball dipped quickly at her feet. Oh, right along the side screen there. Nicolescu not happy with herself. That one just kind of rode down the old hmm. side screen. I kind of like the play, you know, going after Nicolescu a little bit up that side screen. Just to do something a little different because Hapal is doing a great job in that juice court. And Elliot Burrs have to figure out some way to start breaking down Abbauer and Nicolescu, and you don't think it's going to Nicolescu's, let's say her backhand, but maybe it is. Oh. Oh, Burrs Elliot. Short lob. I mean, you hit a short lob to Elliot. Not much different than hitting a short lob to Nicolescu. You're in some deep. Exactly. You're in deep trouble. Oh, kind of predicted this set is going to be a little bit different 3-1 Burris Elliott it's insane. making a little bit of a run and I kind of feel like Elliott first just were a little flat starting this match and I didn't really feel like they had to do that much different they just kind of had to stay in a, you know a few longer points because they're confident of their abilities I've never seen them down on each other in a partnership whatsoever I I almost feel like they're oblivious to the score. Yeah, their energy you know, always stays up. They have good body language throughout the match. And once you see Macy Elliott's high fives getting harder and harder, you know, she's kind of catching a wave of playing well. And they definitely need that energy to be up. And Lynn Bursch definitely needs her partner's help right now to stay in it and be mentally positive as she's struggling with some unforced errors due to the weather. I like this right here. I really do like it. Macy Elliott just 
given a little pep talk to Burr saying, come on, let's go, stay with it. We got this. You know Burr's is just thinking about her serving games. <laughs> like that's that's yeah. kind of pulled her. her. Her attention is going to that. It can. It can. Although, you know, you all these all these women are extremely confident in their in their own abilities. Tough one there. So th you know, one other thing 30, that I've 15. noticed here in Patty is I have noticed the Hallbauer push overhead. It's needs a little adjustment. I think she's using a I think she's using the wrong grip. It's coming off a little bit flat. And especially in this warm weather, it's coming off the screen a little bit too hard. And that could be one thing that if I were to say to Hallbauer, what should you work on? Work on that push overhead because it looks like the paddle's just not it doesn't have that open face. And she's just kind of pushing it almost like a almost like a offense like that like an offensive volley and giving the other team an opportunity to do something offensive with it. Yeah, you, that's, you that's see right there, right? Because she doesn't let the ball get to her. She, just she knows she's hitting the shot, but she reaches forward, and her contact point, she's already at like three quarters of extension. So she doesn't hold the ball on her paddle yeah. as long as you want yeah, her to, exactly. Jack. Yeah, and that little push, like get let the ball drop a little bit more. Like right there, you can see, like that's a push overhead, but she's hitting it high. She's hitting it high. Well, above she did her that head. a lot. I mean, she has transitioned through the tournament she's played this year on that, and that was definitely a liability early in the season. And I think that's the thing, you know, players, the more they play, they get the confidence in allowing the ball to reach them and then use your shots. Yeah, and you can see when Nicolescu hits it, it's, you know, not that she hits a lot of push overheads. I mean, no. they're basically rollers. <laughs> but but when she does, it's it, it's deep and it's low. It's setting her up for the next offensive yeah, shot. Yeah, and it's I not think putting her in more trouble. Right. I mean, she, how about her great volley like this one? See that? Like they're way back, and that's just a different shot than what Halbauer's doing. She kind of pushes it, and the paddle flips. It looks like a little bit, kind of like it flips over, almost like a topspin one right there you know it's almost I'm not going to say it's an up down but right, that was one too many to macy elliott right there yeah, kind of that the same thing there like push that overhead you're deep in the court you're behind the service line push it you've got nicolescu at the net i mean she's going to move around she's going to cover you got to be a little bit careful about hitting that one too hard but a, just a spectacular shot by macy elliott and that's what we were talking about before about elliott and burris Wait for the right one. You mm -hmm. don't need to rush it, especially in this warm weather. You're going to get a look. There's no doubt you're going to get a look. And that one there was a lo I think the longer the points go, the better it's going to be for Burris and Elliott. Yeah, I think in this set, that's, that's the dynamic that we have seen so far. That was wide, but it was pretty close. 40-30. So getting a little frustrated with herself, but once again, from playing one tournament this season with Macy Elliott, I will say that she is nothing but the most supportive partner there is. So I'm sure she's only lifting her partner's spirits up right now as much as she can. 100%, you saw that. I mean, you absolutely saw that earlier. Right, and Macy's just gonna encourage Lynn to keep hitting, she'll get her shots, be patient. And this is, you know, what we've seen. You know, ever since Elliot burst on the scene, she, she's the game changer for me in terms of her tactics and her ability to adjust during matches. Absolutely, she's supportive whoever she's out there with, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, yeah. this is what I would be doing right there all day. Right here. Yeah, this is this is. I mean, I don't understand why that goes there. Set it, it just literally set everything up. Like it just doesn't need to go there. That needs game. It set every that that Number one on shot set two. everything up yep. after that. It wasn't that one shot, but it set everything up after Bruce that. It doesn't Elliott go there. That shot three, has two, to go over to. 
anybody but Nicolescu. I agree. Go ahead, Vera. In collaboration with the APTA, Fusion is at the forefront of personalized gear and apparel. Backed by a team of seasoned industry experts, we provide exclusive access to high-end products from top-tier retail brands, all poised for customization with your club logo, team name, or corporate branding. Our streamlined approach guarantees a hassle-free shopping experience, complemented by custom online storefronts and swift ordering. Visit gearbyfusion.com and let Fusion seamlessly weave your branding into elite merchandise. And we do have an update um, for everyone watching and listening. Humphreys and Asis Koenig were able to pull it out in the third set with a win against Christian and West. Yeah, you heard a big, big roar from the Short Hills Yeah, crowd. A lot of support. Several hundred, hundred standing room only over there, Jeff Morneau. Unbelievable. And Humphreys, you know, pro here at Short Hills. I mean, they all are going to come out to support him. Great player. I, re I mean, I played against him so many times right when he first started. And I'm not going to lie to you, like from day one, from day one you just playing knew. against him, yep. you knew that he was going to be at some point in time one of the best players in the country. His just focus, his left. commitment, and I'll never forget it, Patty. I had a conversation like back when I was at the top of my game, Ardoya and I were playing against Humphreys, and I can't even remember who he was playing with at the time. And... Jeremy Court. It, you know what? You're right. It was Jeremy Court. I was thinking. Thank we you for that. Yeah. I, I mean, I, you know, I just don't remember everything. I barely remember yesterday. So, wow. Mighty. That's a She's good one. small but mighty. And we played him. And after the match, we're at, pa I'll never forget it. And I, We're at Patterson Ragged Club. And he's all he wanted to know. Like, he pulled me aside. And I had never met him before. He's like, so... What do I need to do? How do I get better? Yeah. What What do you think? What do you think? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And he has been that way from the beginning, and he's still that way even though he's at the top of his game. He continues to ask, did you, you know, things like that to other experienced players yep. who are no longer nearly as good as he is. But he just thrives on the knowledge and the experience and his commitment and dedication to not only playing but to his profession about teaching other people, whether you be a PTI 10, 5, 50, 60, he is truly committed to just making, helping people become yep. better players and enjoy this sport. So, you know, kudos to Chris Humphreys because he is the, you know, he's one of the next generation of just great paddle players and paddle professionals all throughout the country. Yeah, and he had Felipe, a great run last year, a little disappointing. They went out in the quarters of nationals. They won a couple of, uh, you know, events last season. Just came up, uh, you know, short a couple times. I think they played three finals against maybe uh, Durant Mitchell last year. Um, and, you know, Chris is eager for information and yeah. able to process a lot of it and thinks about it. And, you know, that's the thing about their sport, Jeff. You've seen it for years. Vera, you're a little newer into it. But what Jeff and I have always seen over the years and how we always learn paddle is you know you get out there you play with someone they beat you and you say hey you what do i have to do to learn. get better and yeah. everybody shares their intel yeah. and i remember some of the top players when i came into the game just said you know i think you, you have to think about this this and this and i said i have to think about three things and they're like yeah well, yeah those are the first three and then think about the next three and then i think yeah, great players challenge themselves you see burst adding you know here she wins nationals last year with macy ellis and she comes out she's tweaking a new serve you know that's love. what great players do they're going to continue. They know everybody else out there is going to tee up yeah. different shots, and they're going to push themselves. And I think that's why the level in sport is as high as we've ever seen, because everybody's pushing each other to get better. You see this match kind of moving, right, Vera? It's 4-2 now. Looks like 4-2 lead for Burrish Elliott. Um, 15 love start for Paul Bauer and Nicolescu. Gabby Nicolescu staying fearless at the net. Not backing up until the ball does pass her. Ooh. Unlikely error from Burrish. Oopsie. Yeah, and you gotta love, I mean, just Elliot, look at this. Just over there, as supportive as can be, high five and giving a little pep talk. I don't think uh, Burrish is, I mean, she is grinding, grinding mentally mm. and mentally her way through this match. It's definitely not her best play of the season, but look at that. You know, they're still in this match. 
and she's continuing to hit, and I, I love it, because she's continuing to hit her shots. transition. Paul Bauer was going for a little too much there. I mean, 30 15. Yep, it's the right idea. She's laughing because she knows, like, oh my God, I can't believe I just did that. I've got to, she knows she's got to go the other direction there. She just went for like the tag or something. But it's. Sometimes it's easier to see things from up here from the HUD or from the live stream. What was the right thing to do? 30 all. Sarah, so much easier. I'm just going to We're tell all you right professionals now, and winners here, right? I'm going to tell you right now, it is always easier to see it from <laughs> up here than it is from down there. We had an update on the other women's semifinals. Our number two seeds, Hannah Sabori, are playing against Morgan Sakura. Hannah Sabori won the first set, 6-3, I believe, and I believe they're up 4-3 in the second set. Another barn burner over there. Crowd's loving it Saturday night under the lights here. I mean, Vera, are these the four teams that we're going to see that we are going to see barring some disaster or some what you would call like a real upset? Are these the four teams that we're going to see in the national final 30, if you were 40. predicting going forward? Or is there another team that's in the quarter back draw that you think could have an opportunity to crack into this group? Jeff, that's an excellent question. I think these are definitely the teams that we're not surprised to see in the semis of this event. And although I'm always rooting for underdogs, I think it's fair to say that all the four teams there in the semifinals here have proven over this, over this yes. last year and this year, over this paddle season, that they deserve to be here. Hence their rank ranking points and hence their confidence on the court and the way they play. And yeah, barring some disaster, as you mentioned, or you know, other players figuring out a way to deal with the weapons that they're faced with from these new newly emerged teams or teams that have played together for a long time. Um, this is who we're expecting to battle for the Nationals Trophy for sure. So who's in the, uh, you know, we're watching this here. It's 4-2. It's deuce. This is a, a huge point. Into the Nick. Nicolescu gets it. Good lob there. Here comes the, the hammer throw. They charge in a good blitz. It's a great really move. Great move. Great move just to... You know, just a physical error, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, a great move that's one that she's going to make, and if she puts that thing over the net, it's going to be a winner, and they're going to have the advantage. But here we have add out. Big return there by Burris. Burris is really known for her down the line return. Um, Patty and I have seen it in her, in the final, I believe, of Atlanta Classic this year when they played Sakura and Morgan, and she really zero in on it. Well, she's got a forehand. That's why she's go over in the ad court now. They what want to be able to capitalize right a little there. bit more. Question the umpire was out. It might have been out. There's going to be a the umpire would have been able to question see it here. Time. It's very close. So fast. Great play. Deuce. That one looked long. That it did. was long. It's going to get confirmed by the umpire. That out. Head out again. Burris not going to be a, way inside the baseline. Big rip. Good volley there. Looks like Burris is just going to say she's getting some of yeah, her she's confidence it. back. But yeah, I, I just I mean I've 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 watched this whole match and I've seen some play of you know watching women's paddle over the years. She's not going to stop swinging because she's not playing well. Right. Because she's not, I shouldn't say not playing well. She's not playing her best right now. She's not going to stop swinging. She's not lacking in any confidence in any of her shots. Right, and I think she, you know, won nationals playing the deuce court, had that return to serve, but her forehand is truly a weapon out here. And with Macy Elliott's two-handed backhand up the middle, it, you know, the, you don't have that many safe spots when you're playing against them. And... And like you said, you know, Burris is a little off in this match, but, you know, 
the yeah, longer it's this still match, a pick em. Yeah, it's still it's a, a pick em, even though they're de 100%. they lost first set. That's like delete button. I, I just, we're looking at their set. It's 4-2. Advantage, Paul Bauer, Nicolescu. Right in the yeah. wheelhouse of Macy Elliott. You can tell that she likes that one. She was a little disappointed. Did a quadruple paddle flip we're and still some figure caught skating it. moves on the court. The triple sow cow. <laughs> Is that what it's called? I, I mean, sow cow. I should know, but I don't. <laughs> We need the Olympics more than every four years so we know what <laughs> these terms are. That looked long, too. Both of them look long. Is that going to get call overruled? Stands. Call stands long. Yes, it's no. going to be a questionable call. I'm not going to lie. The other one looked long to me, too, before yeah. from here. And I know we're up. I have to say the other one looked more long than this one. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm, we're, you know, we're pretty far removed from where the court is, but we do have a direct line, you know, to where those two calls were. Both of them look long to me. Yeah, I think when it's that fast, the umpire might have to stay with the call of the team if she's not sure. Right, well, she's got to be really definite to, to have an overall. Yeah, that's, that was a really good overhead right there. Well, that's the one where Burris, if she lobs up that line and pushes Hal Baller out of the service line, I would look for Macy Elliott to make a move, kind of like a floor handish move, where I wouldn't be surprised to see her blitz and, and just take a shot, because Hal Baller's laying off that overhead a little bit. And she's quick enough to do it, 100%. I haven't watched enough paddle. Does Burris have a two-hand backhand drive, or is she always like a Jeff Morno and lobbing that one no matter what? She's so similar to your style of play. No, <laughs> not. It's basically like watching you. yourself out there, Jeff. <laughs> oh, it's like goodness. looking in the mirror, that Jeff. That was a bad overhead yeah. by Halbauer. Ooh. Got them in trouble, got them off the net. And then Nicolescu trying to force it from Wrong the back. Ball. Again, this warm weather. Wait, wait, wait. You're going to get something off the screen. You're going to get a better look. Right, and that ball is moving away from Nicolescu, where she's superior when a ball's moving into her yeah. body. Once, once she gets stretched out like that, it changes her shot altogether. Good overhead there. I heard uh, Brad Easterbrook was calling the other match with Hannah Sabori and Cora uh, mentioned Hannah uh, Sabori, I believe, are up 5 4 in the second set. They won the first set 6 3. Six, four. Six, four. Five, five, correction. Set, yeah, we got 5 two, 2 here. Complete role reversal, a little bit slower Paul play, Bauer, taking Nicolas advantage, the first set, waiting six, for a little bit more of waiting for the right opportunity from Burris Elliott as opposed to the you know, taking any opportunity, and I think that has really been a game changer. Macy Elliott has done a better job over there on the deuce court, I think, of chasing those balls down the line and making, having a little better decision making as opposed to, you know, making the decision of whether to lob it or whether to drive it. And that's, to me, that's really been the difference. I mean, I, I think we're going the distance here, Patty, tonight. I think so. This is Macy Elliott serving. I think we're going to close down Shore Hill <laughs> Saturday with a... I have a, a feeling with a three-setter. And there's no way this match is lasting longer than the Short Hills after party, I'll tell you that, guys. No Whoa. chance of that. I mean, and there's no chance that I'm not going to be part of the after party <laughs> while announcing. You're going to so. be shutting it down either way, Jeff. I, I see what it's coming down to. I mean, it wouldn't be my first or last time shutting down a paddle party. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm gonna tell you this, Vera. I didn't come here to win the title. At least not. The, we the know where the real title lies. Correct. 
correct. About 15. See, that's the one that, that's the one, she's just not in position to make that shot. She just needs to lob it, reset, she's gonna get a better look. I mean, she's in an awkward position. It's kind of like, I don't know, body was contorted. And even if she makes it, it's just gonna get volleyed behind her for a winner. Two-hander right there from Nikoleski. Yeah, you see how Elliot, that, as soon as yeah. she sees Nikoleski getting ready, she yeah. just but gets that, herself over but, on that but, side but screen. But that last, but, but that, see the difference, right? The, the other, all the other times she tried to drive that ball, that one there, she lobbed that one where she wasn't in position, and then look, the next one she was in position to make a good drive. And, and she, she looked to find her back end. That kind of was a difference too, yeah. to your point, Patty. She pulls herself to the side screen. Instead of turning around and looking for a forehand, she just committed to. Right, well, when you, when you play against Nikolaski, if you've seen it enough and you see the short lob, you can't stay deep behind the baseline, splitting, you know, on your, in the middle of your side of the deuce court. You have to commit to that side screen and your partner will, is the trailer on the play, will cover behind you. And you can see that's what Elliot's doing here. And it's a huge adjustment. Huge forehand by Nikolaski. 1530. Oh, down a little short, oh, short overhead. Kind of, I wouldn't call it a complete up down, but it was just short in the box. Right in Nikoleski's wheelhouse. Huge game right here to see if Paul Bauer and Nikoleski can stay in the set. position to make that kind of get that ball up high and smack it down. I feel like Macy Elliott almost just faked out Gabby Nicolescu by going left. Nicolescu thinking that was an opening to that big roller, but Macy took that step over to the right just as Gabby was hitting it. He took off early enough to make that corny drive. Jeff, um, do you have your team ready for Team Nationals? First Saturday and Sunday in April? Um, I'm not, no, I don't know anything. I don't know much about that, Patty. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Team Nationals? Oh, well, it is the biggest event of the year with over 800 participants last year. Mike Raleigh hosts 800, 800 people last year. We, we, it's so big, we have to split it up between states. We have to separate, like, a couple. I mean, I, I'm How many not miles is it from here to Chicago, Jeff? Uh, it's have you ever driven it? Plane ride. Plane ride. <laughs> plane ride. But I, I will say, up in, I mean, I'm out in the kind of little bit of the boonies of Massachusetts. So mm -hmm. we're, I'm about 30 minutes north of Hartford, an hour and a half from Boston. There's, there's, it's a smaller paddle community, but they are talking about the uh, putting together a couple of teams for Well, tell the them to act nationals. fast. It's about to fill up. I mean, yeah, they, it's, it's, it's they sold are. out. Last year, we took in extra teams at the last minute, try to accommodate everybody. It's a massive undertaking, and Mike Raleigh does a great job out there, and Greg Morton does a great job here. The uh, women will be uh, headed to the Midwest for the event this year. We APTA has been flipping back and forth. Guys were out here two years ago, and the guys are back, hosted by yeah, Canoe Brook out it, here and Exmoor out there. Yeah, it, it is. It's it's really yes. it's really fun. A lot of leagues, a lot of people get out there. They've got their teams, they play all season long, and they kind of mix and match, and then they go to Team Nationals, and 
you know, somebody comes away a winner. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. My wife came home last year and told me she was a national champion. How great is that? And I was like, I, 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 I don't know. How, how did that happen? That's the great thing it about is. the APTA initiative, you know, to it grow is. the game. And it started when we added, you know, B events years ago. And with the introduction of the PTI, able to get people to go in and be able to play against players of similar ability levels, uh, data-driven. Yes. Um, and that's, that's what's kind of, you know, created the avenue for APTA then to offer up this team nationals. And it is so much fun for all the players. It, it really is. It really is. It's a great. It's a great time. It's a great experience. Um, you know, I encourage everybody to sign up and play and participate in such just a spectacular event. It's really fun. Thank you. And you too, for all of you listening, you too could be a national champion. That's right. Advantage, Paul Bauer and Nicolescu. Big point right here. Burish coming up a little, a little short with her drive. Looks like it's an add out on Elliot's serve. Yeah, I mean this, the momentum's really changed, and I, I, I mean I could be wrong. I've been wrong a lot in my life, <laughs> but I just feel like this one's going three. Oh! Wow! What a amazing! <laughs> I mean, if did I almost say something? Point. What an amazing <laughs> get! Absolutely amazing. I was on the edge of my seat when you were about to say that. Uh, that's how I like to keep it, Patty. That was keep them on the edge of their seat. Spectacular. That was just really, really good. Such athleticism. Jeff, how is how's the other semifinals going? Um, I'm not really sure. I have a little bit of a hard time seeing. But for all of you wondering, it does look like. Zubori and Hanish have won and made their way through to the final. I can see them out on the court. They are hugging each other in their pink and black outfits, matching, no surprise to all of you fans. Got through 6475 against Sakura and Morgan. Getting closer, getting closer, but still not able to seal the deal, um, Sakura and Morgan. Yep, they're they're in there. They've I mean, they're got themselves just, top four in the country. They're just right in the mix. They really are in the mix, but they haven't. I don't think. And again, I don't follow at all, but I don't think that they have found their way to beat Hanish and Zubori yet, ever. Have they? I think they have. Well, that's what I like to hear, Patty. Tell us about that. Just one second. I've got to open up that envelope in my brain. Or on that little detail sheet that you might have sitting right in front of you that APTA exactly, I've provides got a, you. Uh, yeah. Patty Hogan provides this for me. So uh, Morgan, right here. Morgan Sikora won the Medina Cup earlier yeah. in the season. But they won, they, they they won the Baltimore two. Open where they beat Hannah and Zabori. Okay. 6-4 in the third. Okay. After losing the first set. Okay. So. It has happened. So I, that, do, I have some to intel on that. And that's why, you know, that's... That's good. That's good to hear. It's good to hear. Because I, I didn't know that. You know, I remember. I'm and not, not only that, Jeff. Long Island this year. Yep. Morgan Sakura beat Elliot Kiro. So Morgan Sakura have wins over number one and two teams in the country. That's the difference with them this year from the last couple of years. Okay. So they, has, are, they are right there. Can I ask a question? Has Sakura gone to the underhand serve? Um, you know, I haven't had the benefit of watching her yet in this tournament, so I'm not sure. Okay. I remember. I don't think I've seen her go underhand serve from, from based on the last tournament that I've seen her play and on the matches today. I believe she's still going. She's going overhand? Yeah. Okay, interesting. So I, I remember back maybe two or three years ago, Socorro Morgan came out from, they're from Pennsylvania area, Chicago, Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania area. They Pennsylvania. came out. Well, they drove Chicago through Pennsylvania, and, possibly. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Well, they came out to the western. They came out to Western New England when Western New England, which is in you know Western sure. Massachusetts, to play in an event. And I remember I watched them play, and they've been together now for a few years. And Sakura was she had some serving troubles at the time, and she was trying to go to a new you know a new serve or a side you know whatever it was. I can't remember mm -hmm. exactly. 
but I went out on the court with her and I, I tried to help her a little bit with a sidearm serve. And I thought that she would eventually go to that because I thought it would be really helpful for her. But I, so Not that, 30. You know, it'll be interesting to watch tomorrow. Well, you I mean, know what? She's more confident pulling the trigger on her two-hand and backhand than her forehand. Yeah. Where, like, I feel like Nicolescu would be something where that sidearm serve would be natural for her. I could totally see that. Um, and Sakura actually has been working and, and has added a little extra motion this year on her serve and is going for a little bit more kind of loosening up her grip back there and able to snap and add a little bit more spin than I've seen in the past. Well, Hannah Shibori are on, are through to the final and we're gonna waiting here for the, see who wins this match and we'll verse them tomorrow morning. Kick off the morning, men's semifinal action, nine o'clock, women's final, 10.30, men's final and follow. Followed by a little football. Well, I'm trying to think. Um, I know Durant and Mitchell won in a barn burner. Ooh, tag. Yep, they we, won over at Bostrom Rams. Left 40. We call that a boom when somebody gets hit <laughs> like that. Boom! Is that Wait, what we call it, Jeff? How is that, Jeff? Yeah, you just go boom. <laughs> Bing, bang, boom. Boom, there it is. You got that, Vera? Say that? Actually, no. if you put I'll that it, if I'll you put that Jeff. if you put that replay on again, we can just do boom again. We just go boom, 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 boom. Yeah. It's always nice to see somebody get hit that it's not me. Um, yeah. So, any were there any upsets? Are, who's going through to the men's semis? Do we have the top four seeds. We have. Oh no, we we don't. I don't think because we, I know that I did watch Powers right. and. McNerney get their way through. So that was, I wouldn't know if that's an upset, three. but it's by seeds, it's Tom an Allen upset. Tom Nicolescu took the first set, 6-3. We will be right back in just a moment after these messages right here on the APTA YouTube channel presented by My Paddle. Ready for a whole new training experience? Welcome to Volley. At Volley, we've developed the first AI training system for racket sports. Providing pros with the advanced teaching tools they've been waiting for and giving players a new way to level up their game and enhance their time on the court. Ask your pro about a volley lesson today and learn what volley can do for you. We'll see you on the court. At Corient, we believe wealth management begins and ends with you. Because the more personal the solution, the more powerful it is. We treat your goals as our own. We never lose focus on the life you want to build and provide unlimited access to the collective and profound knowledge of experts across the country. It's time your wealth strategy was as sophisticated as you. It's time to join Corient. Hi everyone, my name is Vera Bisanova. I'm the head pro from Short Hills Club in New Jersey. And today I have a tip on driving for you. Quite often I see players staying open with the weight on the back of their feet, which makes them be off balance. But if you can turn sideways, now you can bring your power forward with you on the drive. I'm Vera Bisanova, hope this helps you with your drives and good luck. Hello, this is John Weinleiter with Volley, and we're here at the Philly Open having a great time. So exciting to be out here at the second Grand Prix event and seeing all the momentum that's being gathered this season. Uh, it's been great being a partner with the APTA, and we've been excited with all the momentum with Volley as well. And we're about ready to hit our half millionth ball right now on all the trainers. So it's pretty exciting that people are finding the product and talking about it. To keep track of all the new stuff going on with Volley, follow us on social or visit our website, getvolley.com. Thank you.
Welcome back to the APTA Tour. We're in the semifinals of women's play here where we just see our defending, we just saw our defending national champs, Macy Elliott and Lynn Hurst come back in that second set, win at 6-3. Uh, Nicolescu and Haubeller won the first set. 6-3, uh, I'm Patty Hogan along with Jeff Morneau and Vera Basanova and Jeff, how impressive is this play out here? This is actually great play. It's been a lot of fast action, which I've really liked to see. Um, I think the warm weather has absolutely helped that, but I just think these four players in general like to play that way. It's nice and fast, a lot of rollers. And um, I'm looking forward to a great third set. This is looks like it's gonna be the final, you know, it's the final match of the day here at Short Hills. There are still hundreds of people outside gathering around watching this match the food is still being served the beer is flowing and we are about to get started with burris to start the serving are you surprised that burris has started serving in the second and third set you know what? after that first set i am not because if i were macy elliott i would be trying to instill as much confidence in my partner as i possibly could and she didn't have you know, the best serving performance there in the first two sets, but the only way, you know, you don't want to deflect the confidence. You want to instill confidence in your partner, and that's what Macy Elliott is doing. And I, I, I'm not going to lie to you, I think Burris might absolutely take over this set. Lot 15. It's like everybody went in, they're now in short sleeve shirts, despite the fact that it is, you know, almost eight o'clock here on the East Coast in Short Hills, New Jersey. They're already talking though after the first point. Elliot instilling a little more confidence. Nicolescu gonna take this return. They can never talk enough, Jeff, during some of these matches. Trying to line this one up, pushes a lob. Elliot goes back and gets it. Shout out to Court Pro's Rob Coster. Uh, Rob's enjoying the action and loves listening to you, Jeff Morneau. And thanks to Rob Coster and Court Pro and Chris Kazaragi and Riley Green Mountain for their support of the upcoming Junior Nationals first Saturday in March. Absolutely. Rob Coster, former APTA president back in the day. Oh, yeah. Good rip there by Hallbauer. First time Hallbauer's been over on that side, tried to pull yeah, that two-handed backhand. But again, Jeff, you like that because you think it shows confidence. I, I do like the confidence. Oh, I'd like to see it from kind of her own side. Again, it's a, you know, you, maybe you get a little bit of a better look, but. Deep lob there. See, I don't think it matters to Nicolescu who's over in that deuce court. She's still gonna pull the trigger on her shots and you know, her roller that goes straight ahead opens up the next shot for herself, and she loves, you know, that pattern of overheads. But you see how some good shots is, here, just Jeff, kind of just, playing down the middle. Yeah, and, and like she could go out there, and here you go. You know, you say which team has momentum? Obviously, first and Elliot because they won the second set. But the thing is, this is what I've always seen with first Elliot as a team. They are always staying in there, and they stay pretty level. You don't. You don't feel them individually. You know, they may be struggling, but I never feel as a team they go up and down. They're, they're, they're always on a unified front. Great get there by Burris off of the nick by Nicolescu. Big backhand coming from Macy Elliott. That one was very close oh, to being out. That made me a little nervous. Yeah.
See, I was thinking about team nationals with you, Jeff, because I have never been so inspired by your motivational speeches to your teams in the old days of at nationals and president's cup and you fired up your guys and i'm not gonna lie we I were mean, talking about so i i ran into anton protsenko <laughs> today who i hadn't seen in a long time and he was actually talking about the president's cup and the president's cup speeches from back in the day and it was you know i have a few of yours on video that I'm every once in a while it'll come through my screen and i'll just i'll just watch it because I, I just love that just epitomized our entire sport and the camaraderie and everybody battling each other week in and week out on the tour, but come together as a team and you just fired your team up and I just felt like your team couldn't be denied well, the win, Jeff, well, because of your leadership. Well, Mark Parsons kind of, I have to be honest, Mark Parsons was a, the leader of the press. Did it help to have two. Mark Parsons it, on your team? It totally. And he was our... Johan he, Duran? He, he was the key. Parsons was, it's all about the captain. It's not about the player. We know that. I mean, Durant, whatever, you know. Yeah, he was nice 30 for your team. team. Yeah, I mean, it's all right. I mean, it's, a, hmm. it's an added bonus, but it's really all about the captain at the end of the day. I mean, that's really what inspires the players to play in the President's Cup. I mean, the tournaments themselves are really, it's selfish. It's about you. It's that's about right. you and your partner. The President's Cup and, these, and, and Team Nationals, it's about a team. It's yeah. not about yep. you. It's not about you and your partner. Team Nationals is about your team. It's six, eight, ten people, whatever the team amount is. That's what it's really all about. So the President's Cup was really fun. They've done away with it for some other things, but who knows, maybe Cardio. it'll come back someday. Well, they've got the Baird Cup and the Fulton Cup now, so they've got um, something where anybody can play on the men's and women's side. The, the men, when you were leading the way, Cardio. all the top guys would play where there used to be a rule that if uh, women's side, maybe the top 12 in the country weren't allowed to play. Yeah. So that's changed now. So anybody who wants to jump in and play the team event, um, if those players have qualified for the national championships, they get to jump in and play yeah. in either the Baird uh, Cup after named after Steve yeah. Baird or the Fulton Cup after Robin Fulton. Yeah, Two there's of our games so many, all time There's creates. so many opportunities for people to get involved um, and, and really you know, get involved in nationals, get involved in play, get involved in their own clubs and their own teams, etc. So it's really, it's really, the sport has really grown under the leadership of uh, Mr. Kadari as the president. Mean has done just a spectacular job over the last couple of years. Oh, I thought he just walked in the room. No, no, he's just done a good job. Yeah, I mean, put together the PTI. I mean, we had a lot of people talking about that. Um, great shot there, got in the nick. Wasn't able, to, 40, wasn't able to cover that there by Halbauer, but it's 40-30 now. Burris to serve. Let's see if she can power one of these serves into the nick and try to get this opening game lead. Jeff, did you play baseball when you were a kid? No, not really. It's what sports boring. did you play? Soccer, mm -hmm. tennis. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, I played a lot of sports, but primarily soccer. I just thought you were a team sport kind of guy. No. Not at all. There's Burris, the dropper, the Burris. backhand dropper for Burris a winner Elliott. off of a drive by Kalbauer. They take a 1 0 lead here going into the third set. The momentum has Nicolescu and Halbauer are going to have to do something here in the third set to change the momentum because it is flipped. It went from 6-3, Halbauer, Nicolescu. It's now 6-3, Burris, Elliott. But it, even that 6-3 set, you could, it's the momentum that has really changed. The confidence level, it just looks like there's a strategy in place by, uh, by Burris and Elliott, and they feel confident in their plan to end up winning this match. So Jeff, if you could put an earbud in L.A. Havbauer's ear and one in Nicolescu's, what would you whisper to them? Um, I would say less. I think they just need to take some power off of. I think these power shots are, they're starting to figure them out. Like this right here, that's not a good shot. You mean too much power. It's too like much power, 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 power. Yeah, in the, in the and warm weather. 
Yeah, it worked. I'm not going to lie. I think it worked in the first set because I think Macy Elliott was a, just a little bit off. I think both Elliott and Burris were off of their game. Looked like Macy Elliott was going for too much when she wasn't really in position to hit it. They've really settled. They've really settled down from the backcourt just like that. Like they're really Number picking 15. their spots for when they're actually trying to drive as opposed to trying to drive everything. Yeah, and way to find Hall Bowers back in volley. As Patty mentioned earlier, she looks to hit her volleys a little bit more like on the tennis side, flipping Love her paddle. 30. So that was a great spot by Elliot. We've just been given a little intel about Jeff Morneau from Rob Coster. Is he president of the Jeff Morneau fan club? I have no idea, but I haven't seen him in about five years. Providence College Athletic Hall of Fame tennis. Sweet. I mean, they let anybody in that. I mean, did you I have to short hop that. and skip before you hit a ball to get in that hall? I don't know. I got some friends who had money, donate a lot of money. To do that. They just wanted a big party. That's awesome, Jeff. Great play there by Hallbauer, though. 15-30. Gets in there. <laughs> sneaks out a point. This game is huge for Hallbauer and Nicolas Cook. They're looking to stay in the match. 15-30 down on the serve. Absolutely. A really two love would be running away with it for Bush and Elliott and they're a great team. They're gonna take advantage of, of those small leads and those small moments that will add up. Right, and we talked about the serving and a little bit with uh Burris' struggle here early going in this match and you know, Hot Baller and Nicolescu. I've seen them, you know, they're gonna have a lot of pressure on their serves and neither of them hits with a tremendous amount of spin for control. And I think that could be a factor here as Elliot and Burris are gaining a lot of confidence. It's right on the line. See, I'm surprised look, Elliot did I mean, look, same but spot, but same spot. I mean, two points. look where they are to volley. I mean, they only have one foot inside the service line. Somebody there needs to be on the net. And I'm, I really think it needs to be Nicolescu. I mean, she's got to be on the net. If Paul Bauer's hitting that over, look at those hands, but though. Oh, my God. Bursch very rescue. confident <laughs> with the blitz. Yeah. Creating good transition to end up at the net. And, uh, and Burris is, I mean, she's, as I kind of said, I thought she would turn it around here in the third set. You predicted it, Jeff. And she just, I mean, she made a mistake maybe in the first game, but I, I just think she's going to be a difference maker here in the third set. And I... Good shot there, though. Couldn't get back there 30, in transition 40. to get that lob back in play. 40-30 as... Yeah, and I believe we have uh, Sven Borish joining us on the sidelines watching the match, supporting Lynn out there. So hopefully she's feeling that boost of confidence that she needs for, for yeah. moving those unforced airs. Absolutely. Just, I mean, that wasn't happening in the first two sets, was it? Just that play right there wasn't happening. I just see the, the overhead the from Nicolescu. Sorry, Jeff, right there. Three see points. how she went up? She did the roller, and then, you know, we talked about she Three needed a little variety. She's got to let that ball drop and hit some of those cutters low. That ball just sat up way too high. And, and there's nobody on the net on the team of Nicolescu no. and Hallbauer, and that is becoming a problem. I mean, these volleys are getting more challenging. They're picking, the, Burris and Elliott are doing a much better job of picking their spots for their drives. They're driving the ball down low with the feet when somebody's <laughs> off the net, and that is really being the difference. Versus, I think, Seven. the first, like, set, even a, maybe set and a quarter, they were just trying to drive everything. They get the back screen, they're driving it, they're not in position. They're really being particular about their shot selection. Um, yeah. It and was that's a little bit more difference. chaotic, for sure. Yeah. You got it all there. Wow. Good wow. try by Hall Great serve. That's what I'm talking about, Macy Elliott. I mean, you didn't see her do that two years ago. Great serve. You think Nicolescu's going to drive this? 
I looked away, but did she? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Great lob there by Hallbauer. Now it's just a matter of staying tight on the net. But look when it looks like they've got yeah, drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were able to watch. Make that well, look there. where Hallbauer is. Look, she's not comfortable being up there, right? It looks like she's just not really. I'm yeah. not sure if not reading it and, early and enough or just not closing in enough for that and, and ball. I, I'm not, I mean, I play a little bit the same way. I don't like to be on the net either. I'm not comfor I'm not as comfortable right on top of the net, which is why I say, why I said before, it's really Nicolescu that needs to be on the net. Let Hallbauer hit that, but where's Nicolescu right now? See where she is? In my opinion, when she, when Hall, Hallbauer's overheads are okay, they're not getting in any trouble. But Nicolescu needs to be on the net in case Halbauer hits a bad one. Yeah, yeah but that's with her talent. it's tough with her height to commit to being on top of the net in that situation because all Macy Elliott, Macy Elliott will look. I mean, just I mean, you just watch when Nicolescu's hitting an line. overhead right now, and I'm right. just noticing this. Halbauer m moves back and to the right. Yep. It's not just she doesn't move up to cover; she's moving back and to the right. And that's leaving so much open at the bottom of your feet in yep. case anybody hits a bad overhead. And early in this match, I'm not, it looked to me like Burris and Elliot 30, were just making horrific decisions in terms of they were trying to drive everything instead of waiting for the right opportunity. Now they're waiting for the right opportunity and they're just, hit, they're just hitting, they're hitting balls at the feet. Yeah, and I think Patty um, mentioned earlier in the, the quarterfinals match that we watched a little earlier in the day, the positioning for Gabby Nicolescu and Ellie Halbauer is just not a very traditional paddle positioning at the net. They kind of both cover their own half 40, of their 15. own side as opposed to cover covering the court in thirds and getting up to the net if your partner is pulled back, doing things like that. And this is where I think the experience, the paddle experience comes in handy. Yeah. And this is something. And the teamwork. I just feel like that teamwork between Hal Baller and Nicolescu. Oh Game. They uh, haven't been on the same page. Elliot. They've had some Lead good results semis. Nicolescu love. is used to winning semis. Yeah, we, I mean, we've, um, got a th we've got a 3-0 lead right here. Yeah. And if, I mean, you're, I, it, I, I think you're seeing the right thing here. I think you're seeing Nicolescu and Hal Bauer take a take they should take a lot of time right here they should let burris and elliott go sit back there behind the green for a couple of minutes make the umpire call yeah. them back yeah, to go serve take as much time there. as they possibly can because the bus is going in the completely okay. wrong direction and they need to take as much time as they can just sit on the sidelines for as long as they can it looks like they're talking through it and that's on that's on gabby a lot of her a lot of experience there to take her time but the longer they take, the better off it is. Yeah, I agree, and that's what Nicolescu is not known to be the player who will do that. She she tends to keep going at the same pace, and I don't know. Some people think it's gamesmanship when you slow it down that much, but it's a tactic when you're getting late in a match and it's going all against you here. I mean, it is gamesmanship, Kieran. Patty, but it's part of the game. That's why they call it gamesmen, <laughs> uh -huh. games, men or womanship, however hmm. you want to look at it, but. You know, it's sometimes it's what you need to do. Is there a Latin root to the word? I, that I don't Mr. know. Mr. Attorney? No. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say I haven't done it before. Help me. But you see the difference there, like Macy, right? Before she was driving that ball, and would either go in the net or hit the back screen, but now she's flopping oh. it back in play. When she doesn't have it lined up, she's just blocking it back in play. Just such better decision making as this match has gone along. Right, and for a lot of players, when they're, you know, playing and, and the shots coming off the screens, you know, the earlier prep gives you the allowance to wait longer, longer, longer. 30, if you're 15. playing chase up and you're just swinging at the ball, you can't control that play at that point in time. And that's, you know, what Elliot, we've always seen her make adjustments to, to things like that. I think I might have heard something similar from you in our high energy clinics, Patty. You think, Vera? And there's Will Everett, another one of the Short Hills Pro, another one of our high energy pros. I will say he's been great all weekend. Spectacular. Oh, Done a he great is job. outstanding. It, we know how much work it is that goes into these events, and we know that it's not 
the pros. It's not just the staff. It takes a full team of people. And you've been here all weekend long. With a smile. At the computer, smiling, and not, not just taking care of like this player or that player. You've been taking care of everybody. The members, the fans, the it's players, the, kind of guy he the is. APTA staff. 30, 40. You've just really done a spectacular job. Spectacular job. And it's not easy It's not easy to do with all the divisions that are going on and all the people and all the things that you have to deal with. You know, I'd say, I'd say that the board of directors should consider Dave. a raise, but I don't want to really get Elliot. too far involved in that. I'm just kind of saying you've just done a great job this weekend for sure that I've been here. Oh, you're making them blush now. No, I, I don't just say that. I've been to a lot, I've been, no, no, I've been to no, a lot you're, of, I, you're, I'm sincere, I, I wouldn't just are. say that. I could have just ignored it, but I've been to a lot of clubs. <laughs> I've, I've been to a lot of clubs, I've been to a lot of tournaments, I've been around the block and, you know, some places do it better, some people are better at what they do, but he's just done a spectacular job. I've watched him when things have gone you know, there, been some, there always are challenges along the way. He's he's approached every single thing with a smile and with uh, his great personality and just done a spectacular job of making everybody feel welcome and enjoying this great event over the last couple of days. 15 love. 4-0, as somebody has said, the water is on its way down the drain and I'm really not sure what they can do at this point. Mm, they have to, to hope the weather drops and there's a deep freeze. Yeah. I think actually they're going to need a timeout. I think they do need a timeout. Is it legal to call a timeout? I mean, I would fake an injury right now myself <laughs> if I were in this match for sure. Which one would you go for, Jeff? Would you uh, fall down? Calf, calf. I calf. always go calf injury because you can only recover from it, but that's the only, that's the only way at this point. I just don't see this changing. They've really, I mean, Burris and Elliott have really steadied their play. I think we're seeing why they are the defending national champions. 30 love. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm still not overly convinced that Nicolescu. No, they won the Nationals last year. I Jeff. know they did. Well, I mean, you know, I'm not convinced that Nicolescu and Paul Bauer cannot find their way to a national championship this year. They clearly have the talent to do it, and I they're going to continue to work on it. They've got three weeks, three or four weeks between now mm -hmm. and the Nationals. I think they're going to take a look at this match. I think they're going to listen to what we've all said here, what you've said, Patty, what Vera said, what I've said, and they're going to go back and see sort of what went wrong. You know, 40, I don't 50. think they can take much from the first set in terms of saying, oh, we played great, we're, we're right there, because I do think Burris and Elliott didn't play great. But I think if they go back and take a look at this match, they're really going to be able to see where things went south for them. And those are, and they're, they're easily fixable because it's more strategic things than anything else. Yeah, it's tactical, the adjustments they need to Correct. make. And, and I believe that they were riding that wave. They had that momentum coming out of the quarters and caught Burrs and Elliott just a little flat. Burrs, Elliott, they lead the third set. At the beginning of they this did. match. Five and then love. this is testing the, you know, the teamwork of Nicolescu and Habaler. And, you know, I saw uh, It'll be a Nicolescu before the quarters, and I said, are you guys on the same page? And Nicolescu said, to be determined. So we're going to listen to Vera for one second for one more sponsor read. Bali is the official sponsor of the APTA for the 2023-2024 season. Backed by cutting-edge technology, including its unique vision software, Bali is the innovator of the first AI-enabled racket sports training that simulates point play. By enabling players and pros to record sessions on the court, Bali delivers off-the-court player analysis and support all from your phone. It takes only minutes to sign up. Ask your pro about a volley lesson today. For more information, visit volley.com. Okay, so before we get into this match, I do want to talk a little bit about volley. 15. So I saw that thing for the first time recently. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen the video online. You can go to whatever it is, volley.com, yeah. and, and look at it, and there's some videos out there. I played the other day, I hit with somebody at Canoebrook Country Club, and the volley machine was there, which is Canoebrook's right up the road. Yep. And I saw a guy out there practicing off. with that volley machine, and I'd ask, like, that thing is un 
unbelievable yeah, what that great. thing's a game changer. It's, it's a total game changer for any, and I'm not just saying this because it's, you know, whatever, APTA, blah, blah, blah. I watched this guy do his thing out there with the machine all by himself. This guy's out there practicing. He's probably like a PTI 30, maybe a 40, if I was taking a, just a, a quick look at him. Mm -hmm. Watching him out there grinding on the volley machine to get better. And what a complete difference maker that thing is gonna be for people who wanna raise their PTI off. by you know, five points. You need a pro as well, but if you just went out there with the volley machine and you practice by yourself, you're gonna raise your PTI by five points if you're in that level, if you do that once a week. So what an incredible machine, a great company, a great idea, and um, just a game changer for paddle. Yeah, and Jeff, you know, when you're out there and you wanna work on your game, it used to be you had to round up three other people. And, you know, Beacon Hill, I see there's a couple guys who will go out there and will arrive in for morning clinics or something, and I see them out there in the volley machine. Shout out to uh, Patrick Sheridan, who loves that machine over at Beacon Hill. And, you know, he said there's so many people, he said, don't really work on the game. They play matches, yeah. but don't go and practice. And it gives people that tool yeah. that the top players all will practice and drill. But club level players traditionally don't do that totally. because it's really hard to find 100%. someone to do it. And now you've got this volley machine doesn't talk back and just hits every ball, never misses. Great yeah, tool. No, the other thing is like, you know, sports, right? So we all have kids or whatever. You're like, okay, I'm going to give my kid a lesson or a tennis lesson or whatever the case may be. Well, if you don't practice yourself in between the lesson, right. doesn't, it's not, you're just taking lessons. You're getting right. better. You're getting knowledge, but you might not get better. You take a lesson once a week or whatever it is, and then you go out once a week with the volley machine. Once or twice a week for a half hour. You're practicing whatever your pro said. Okay, you're get basically getting another hour or so of practice. It's it's really, it, you know, it's 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 innovative. It's a game changer. It's just going to help people get better and enjoy the game. We got a huge point right here. Third y'all. Some would say last chance for Hobauer and Nicolescu to stay and prolong this match. It's a 5-0. I'm going to call that a 5 -0. I'm going to call that the 5-0 shot. It's 5-0 when the point went on too long, and she's like, I'm just going to go for this thing. You know, that's not a shot she's been hitting for the last set and a half, right? Waiting for the better opportunity. And there's that, there's that there's down the line chicken wing drive from Burrish that she hits so well on demand when she's feeling it, and she's been feeling it in the set. Absolutely. Chicken wing Nicolescu because she picked that right side of her body. Nicolescu didn't take her legs over there. She didn't slide over a little bit. And Advantage. That's, that's how the chicken wing volley how comes about about. Nicolescu. Bauer is talented. There's no any yeah, a little bit of a lucky I mean, volley just, there. Yeah, but just so talented. Or to be able talented. To make that. Yeah. yeah, it's just. Yeah, she's just getting better and better. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> game. You hear Nicolescu out there. <laughs> one game. We got go. one. We got one. No bagels. Till tomorrow morning. <laughs> We have women's quarterfinal reprieve match going on out there between uh, Delmonico Gevia against Cruz Lopez. Critical national ranking points are on the line, so that quarterfinal reprieve match is huge. Those teams are all ranked kind of uh, five, six, seven in the country, so a win in this match is going to be helpful for them as they go toward nationals. 15 love. Well, I'm a big Kerry Delmonico fan. I've known Kerry for 20 years. She's, I don't, I, she's like a legend. She's There's no other. She's been playing for so long. There's nobody like her. There's, that's a very true statement to describe Carrie. There's truly no one like her out there. There, there really isn't. There's just nobody like her in general. 
Well, <laughs> you know, never let's mind. just go never with mind, that. Never mind on the They broke board. the mold with Carrie Del Monaco. <laughs> I mean, we're lucky I enough to see Cindy Prendergast in the tournament, Hall of Famer, you know, national champion over and over and over. She's another one who's a warrior out here. And and actually, you know, Cindy probably has the longest streak playing in the Short Hills Invitational. I would say from any player, I'm gonna do a little research on that tonight. Please do, Patty. I'll report in tomorrow on that one. We'll expect it in your envelope I, tomorrow. I'm not gonna, like, I mean, I've had a lot of paddle experiences, and one of my one of my all-time favorites that I won't forget is I played mixed nationals with Cindy Pendergast, ah. and I absolutely had such an I had a spectacular time. Not, I mean, obviously she's one of the nicest people you will ever meet on the planet, but just so fun to play with, and we played against and lost in a absolute barn burner. That is a new one I'm learning today, a by barn the way. Burner? I've never barn heard burner. of barn burner. A barn burner? That's like a, but I really, love it. a really long, drawn out match. And it was two, hold on, I gotta, I gotta try to remember now. Javi. Javi, where are we, Greenwich Country Club? Yes. Do you know who Javi's married to? I believe he was playing, he was, Vicky was trying to carry Javi in that match? I played with Cindy against Javi and Vicky when they were first, you know, yeah. I had known Javi, but, mm -hmm. Vic, and I'm like, oh, we can't hit any balls to Vicky. She didn't miss a single ball for the entire match. It drove me absolutely <laughs> I mean, crazy. What? Didn't matter how many screens I hit or whatever I did, didn't matter. 40, 15. All right, we got a double match point. No one smoother than Vicky's. Double, so double match point. We're making this happen. Macy Elliott and Burris all the way back from, I mean, after the first set, we thought this was not possible. Well, I, I, we all thought it was possible. I got to admit. Jeff, were you doubting not this? Like, I just knew Burris I, and, I, and Elliott would just delete that I'm not, first set. I'm not going to lie. I didn't think it was likely. Mm. I just didn't think it was like I didn't possible you should, you should is possible is too strong. I know, but I didn't think it was likely. I just didn't. It just looked like they were the other. It just looked like they were off. What a great serve on a match point. No fear. And that's it. Game set match. Gosh, Elliot. Three six. So we have our matchup tomorrow. N number one and two teams first. Nice job. Uh, Elliot came through there. Yeah, our tournament number one seeds will face right. Hanish and Zabori, our first. number two team. <laughs> Semi uh, finals action tomorrow at 10.30. We will on. be back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. sharp with uh, men's semifinal action. And Jeff right. and Vera, thanks so much. Jeff, before we leave, who's going to win the Super Bowl? Oh, my goodness. I, I'm going to go with Kansas City. Vera, who's going to win the Super Bowl? I'm just rooting for Taylor Swift's boyfriend, so I have the same guess. There you go. You guys I just <laughs> want to say, this was a pleasure, Patty, announcing with you and Vera. Absolutely such a treat here. Really appreciate it. Jake, on the IT over here, putting all the video analysis together, has done the entire day here. You are a legend for the APTA. I really appreciate it, as does APTA, for all the hard work that you do throughout the day. You don't get nearly enough credit, but without you, we all don't work. So thank you, Jay. Jeff, do you want to run for president? I would vote for Jeff. Okay, you guys, we're going to wrap it up. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., men's semifinals. At Coriant, we believe wealth management begins and ends with you. Because the more personal the solution, the more powerful it is. We treat your goals as our own. We never lose focus on the life you want to build and provide unlimited access to the collective and profound knowledge of experts across the country. It's time your wealth strategy was as sophisticated as you. It's time to join Coriant. Hello, this is John Weinleiter with Volley, and we're here at the Philly Open having a great time. So exciting to be out here at the second Grand Prix event and seeing all the momentum that's being gathered this season. 
Uh, it's been great being a partner with the APTA, and we've been excited with all the momentum with Bali as well. And we're about ready to hit our half millionth ball right now on all the trainers. So it's pretty exciting that people are finding the product and talking about it. To keep track of all the new stuff going on with Bali, follow us on social or visit our website, getbali.com. Thank you.